The year 1965 had a lot of ups and downs for the American people. After all, just two years before, the beloved President John F. Kennedy had been brutally assassinated in front of countless people. Thankfully, President Lyndon B. Johnson was a pillar of strength as he took over the presidency. And while many citizens still missed President John F. Kennedy, most agreed that President Johnson was doing an excellent job. However, he soon began to make some decisions that weren't quite as popular with certain American people. During 1965, while America had surpassed the age of McCarthyism, the U.S. government was still fiercely opposed to communism. Perceiving North Vietnam as a threat to South Vietnam's freedom, President Lyndon B. Johnson decided the best option was for America to become involved with the war. While many of President Johnson's actions were popular, the rising youth counterculture despised this choice, which led to hundreds of protests against the Vietnam War. Despite the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, there were also many more protests for civil rights within the African-American community. While progress was being made, life for black Americans was disproportionately difficult and dangerous. In 1965, Martin Luther King Jr. and several other civil rights leaders led a series of marches from Selma to Montgomery. Unfair treatment of African Americans led to a great deal of tension and unrest. After an inciting incident, a riot broke out over the course of several days in Los Angeles, which would eventually come to be known as the Watts Rebellion. Thankfully, President Lyndon B. Johnson knew that a lot of work had to be done in order to ensure equal rights for all American citizens. As a result, he passed the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which would greatly reduce discrimination during voting. Meanwhile, NASA was working hard to uphold the late President Kennedy's bold request to send a man to the moon by the end of the decade. They continued the Gemini space program, which would train astronauts for future Apollo missions, as well as testing long-duration flights and rendezvous and docking between two spacecraft within Earth's orbit. The year 1965 was an exciting time in American history, although unrest, both international as well as within the country, also made it quite tumultuous. Advancing technology and clashing political ideologies made 1965 very chaotic. Still, with the help of President Lyndon B. Johnson, America's government was able to make great strides. Make sure you stick around to find out how President Johnson signed a bill into law that would help millions of Americans for many decades to come. Facts Verse presents The Year 1965 February 21st, Malcolm X is assassinated. Malcolm X was a pivotal leader within the civil rights movement. He was an African-American Muslim minister who worked as a spokesperson for the Nation of Islam before splitting from the group and creating his own foundation, known as Muslim Mosque Inc. While his ideas were controversial to some, he always stood up for his beliefs. Malcolm X had a rough childhood growing up and endured a lot of terrible discrimination for the color of his skin. When he was very young, a white supremacist group burned down his family's home, and his father died when he was six. While the death was ruled an accident, evidence suggests that the same group of terrorists who burned down his house were also responsible for his father's death. Malcolm's violent childhood led him to become an activist for African Americans. He was very outspoken about his beliefs, which put a target on his back. In fact, after he became a prominent civil rights leader, he was under constant surveillance from the FBI. After Malcolm X split from the Nation of Islam to begin his own group, the Nation of Islam became angry with him, feeling as though they'd been betrayed. He was sent death threats and horrible letters for a long time. On February 21st, 1965, he was tragically assassinated, presumably by the Nation of Islam, although there is some debate about whether American government personnel were also involved in his murder. Years later, he was posthumously awarded a day of remembrance so that people could honor his legacy. March 2nd, President Johnson launches Operation Rolling Thunder. On March 2nd, President Lyndon B. Johnson led a bold move against North Vietnam by launching Operation Rolling Thunder. This codename referred to a military campaign whose goal was to launch sustained aircraft bombings of North Vietnamese targets. Operation Rolling Thunder would continue for three long years, and it didn't end until October of 1968. It was launched partly as a reaction to an attack on a U.S. airbase by Viet Cong forces. Another reason for this operation was because military officials thought that continuous heavy bombing could persuade the North Vietnamese government to surrender. Even after the United States military eventually withdrew its forces in 1973, over 10,000 innocent Vietnamese citizens have been injured or even killed by leftover explosives. March of 1965 also marked the first time American combat troops entered Vietnam in the form of U.S. Marines landing on beaches near South Vietnam. 
March 2nd, The Sound of Music is released. On the very same date that Operation Rolling Thunder was launched, a much more wholesome event occurred. The beloved film The Sound of Music was released. It was so popular that it became the highest-grossing film of the year and by the following year became the highest-grossing film to date, making even more profit than Gone with the Wind. It wasn't just popular in America, either. It also broke box office records in 29 other countries. The film was adapted from the 1959 musical production of the same name, which was based on the real-life historical events of the Von Trapp family. The Sound of Music won five of the ten Academy Awards it was nominated for, including Best Picture. Today, the film remains a household favorite. March 9th, Martin Luther King Jr. leads a civil rights march in Selma, Alabama. Throughout the month of March, civil rights leaders led a series of protest marches from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. They were met with fierce resistance and violence for their efforts. On March 7th, police officers injured and hospitalized dozens of peaceful protesters, and since then, that day in history has become known as Bloody Sunday. Two days later, Martin Luther King Jr. led a second march in the same location in solidarity of the injured protesters. On this same day, a minister named James Reeb was attacked by a group of white men and severely beaten. Two days later, he died from the terrible injuries he sustained. Sadly, even though the protesters were only asking for the right to vote, they were horribly attacked and beaten despite the peaceful nature of their protest and the simplicity of their request. March 23rd, NASA launches Gemini 3. Gemini 3 was the first crewed flight of NASA's Gemini program. Two astronauts, Gus Grissom and John Young, orbited Earth three times in their spacecraft. The goal of this mission was to test the maneuverability functions of the new spacecraft design. These features allowed the crew to change their altitude, change the shape of their orbit, and even slightly shift their orbital plane. This was the first American space mission which included a crew of two people as all manned flights before this point had only included one person. Astronaut Gus Grissom nicknamed the spaceship Molly Brown after the Broadway production The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Other members of NASA disliked the name and asked him to change it. Grissom suggested naming the ship Titanic instead, so they let him keep the name Molly Brown. April 11th, The Palm Sunday Tornado Outbreak On Palm Sunday, April 11, 1965, Midwest states were struck by 47 tornadoes, 21 of which resulted in deaths. These tornadoes affected Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, Ohio, Michigan, and Wisconsin. It was the deadliest tornado outbreak to ever hit Indiana, killing a total of 137 people. A total of 271 people were killed and approximately 1,500 people were injured. The outbreak finally subsided on April 12th, but it left a lot of death and devastation in its wake. The tornadoes affected an area 450 miles long, and it lasted a total of 11 terrifying hours. Because the outbreak occurred on a holy day for Christians, Palm Sunday, many people missed the tornado warnings because they were attending Mass, which unfortunately led to more deaths. May 5th, The Grateful Dead Play Their First Concert On May 5th, a band who called themselves The Warlocks played at a pizza parlor in San Francisco. At the time, nobody knew just how famous this band would eventually become. The performers that night included guitarist Jerry Garcia, Ron McKernan, Bob Weir, and Bill Kreutzmann. A little while after their debut, they introduced Phil Lesh on bass. While they were known as the Warlocks in the beginning, they ultimately changed their name to The Grateful Dead just a few months later in November of 1965. The Grateful Dead were heavily influenced by the psychedelic experience of many artists in the 1960s, which led to a cutting-edge rock style that made fans go wild. They combined elements from a variety of genres, including bluegrass, jazz, blues, folk, country, and psychedelic rock. The fusion of these genres led to a band that would go down in history. July 30th, President Lyndon B. Johnson signs the bill that would lead to Medicaid. As part of his War on Poverty, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the bill that would ultimately lead to the creation of Medicare and Medicaid on July 30, 1965. At the time, half of Americans over the age of 65 did not have medical insurance, and a third of senior citizens were impoverished. President Lyndon B. Johnson created Medicare and Medicaid to help this problem. Today, these programs help around 70 million Americans every year. The programs have also been expanded to help low-income families, people who require long-term medical care, and pregnant women. There have been many changes made to both Medicare and Medicaid over the decades, but the spirit remains the same. These programs exist to help people. Medicare and Medicaid were likely two of the greatest things to come out of the year 1965, although perhaps not the most memorable. 
Make sure you stick around to the very end of this video, where we'll reveal how 1965 wrapped up with one of the most beloved Christmas specials in history. And if you're enjoying the video so far, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more. August 6, President Lyndon B. Johnson signs the Voting Rights Act of 1965. African American men were granted the right to vote by the 15th Amendment in 1870. While this was a huge step, a hundred years later black men still had incredible difficulty voting. This is because African American men in the South were presented with an enormous amount of obstacles. In order to prevent African American men from voting, ridiculous practices like poll taxes existed. One particularly heinous creation was the literacy test. One person would ask potential voters a series of questions which they could make up right there on the spot. The person in charge of administering the test would give very easy questions to white voters, but then ask impossibly hard questions to black voters, such as how many bubbles are in a bar of soap? If the person answered incorrectly, they would be deemed illiterate and would be unable to vote. The Voting Rights Act of 1965 greatly reduced these restrictions, making it far easier for African American men to vote. While certain locations still find ways to get around these restrictions, it was a huge step in making America a better place for everyone to live in. August 11, the Watts Rebellion begins. The Watts Rebellion began in Los Angeles in a primarily black neighborhood after a black man was stopped by police. A physical altercation arose, leading to the gathering of a crowd. People began to protest, and fights broke out between police officers and people within the crowd. It wasn't long before a full-scale fight began, leading to several days of riots. The riots primarily broke out because of many other related incidents which had been occurring for over a year. Tensions between black Americans and white police officers were high, and it didn't take much for a complete riot to begin. August 13th, the Beatles released the album Help. The Beatles' album Help was released on August 6th in the United Kingdom and on August 13th in the United States. The Beatles truly shaped music for decades to come, and we can still find some of their influence in today's music. They also greatly changed the way we view music videos. While the Beatles remain intensely popular even today, it's nothing compared to how crazy fans were in 1965. After all, that year was the height of Beatlemania, when crowds would go wild to see them live. The Beatles also released a film entitled Help on July 29th in the UK and on August 11th in the United States. The musical comedy adventure was insanely popular as well, although it was not met with as much critical acclaim as some of their other film releases. September 15th, Bill Cosby debuts in the TV show I Spy. The adventure show I Spy first aired on September 15, 1965. The show ran for three seasons and featured actors Robert Culp and Bill Cosby as undercover agents. The show kicked off Bill Cosby's acting career, which would last for many long successful decades until he was eventually convicted as a sex offender. The show I Spy capitalized on the latest trend of spy-related content based on the release of the popular James Bond films. Even though it only lasted for three seasons, the show was greatly revered by fans and it remains a classic today. October 28th, the Gateway Arch is completed. When most people think of technological advancement, they think about space travel or computers. However, technological advancement can also lead to momentous architectural achievements. On October 28th, the ambitious Gateway Arch, also known as the St. Louis Arch, was finally completed. The arch was erected in commemoration of President Thomas Jefferson's Louisiana Purchase. The arch was designed by Eero Saarinen, who sadly died of a brain tumor in 1961 before the construction of the arch began. Still, he lives on in his famous design which still stands today. November 8th, the soap opera Days of Our Lives airs. The long-running soap opera Days of Our Lives first aired on November 8, 1965. Today it is one of the longest-running television programs in the entire world and has aired over 13,000 episodes. The show was considered very daring in the 1970s because the writers weren't afraid to broach controversial or taboo subjects at the time. It's been nominated for a staggering amount of Emmy Awards, of which it has won many. The show still has countless die-hard fans who keep up with it every week, although many people are amazed it has continued this long. November 14th, The Battle of Ia Drang On November 14, 1965, the Vietnam War escalated dramatically. The Battle of Ia Drang became the first large-scale battle between American and North Vietnamese forces. The battle took place in South Vietnam's Central Highlands. In this battle, American troops were deployed onto and withdrawn from the battlefield via helicopter. 
which eventually became a very common strategy in the war. Almost 300 Americans died during the battle. The outcome is still unclear even today, as both sides declared themselves victorious. However, it's hard to consider a battle like that a win when there was so much death on both sides. December 9th, A Charlie Brown Christmas Airs One of the most beloved Christmas specials of all time, A Charlie Brown Christmas debuted on December 9, 1965. It became the first TV special based off the Peanuts comic strip, which was created by Charles M. Schultz. Since then, the special has appeared across various television networks ever since, and it's something that adults and children alike look forward to every year. Surprisingly, the creators of the Christmas special originally thought that it was going to be a complete and utter disaster. Once it was released to the public, though, they were shocked to discover that people all over the nation were touched by the heartwarming story. Even better, they felt that the animation, voice acting, and music all wonderfully contributed to bringing the characters from the beloved Peanuts comic to life. Since its creation, A Charlie Brown Christmas has led to many more holiday specials, as well as films, including It's the Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown and A Charlie Brown Thanksgiving. Sadly, Apple TV bought the rights to Peanuts, and as a result, they've decided to pull all of the holiday specials off the air. Instead, they are now accessible only through Apple TV+, Plus, at least at the time of this recording. While Apple TV+, Plus might make the holiday specials free to stream during certain windows throughout the year, this has come as a huge disappointment to millions of people. After all, some families do not have access to streaming services. The bold move has resulted in public outrage, with some declaring it as yet another symbol of corporate greed. Truly, things have changed a lot since the 1960s and it's sad to see something so iconic and intrinsic be removed for profit. The year 1965 was incredibly different from what the world is like today. At the time, there was a lot of tension, both within America itself as well as with other countries. Still, there are ups and downs to both the 1960s and now. Can you think of anything from the year 1965 that you wish we still had today? Or is there something from the year 1965 that you're glad is different now? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Factsverse for more.